So this is what we learned yesterday. We, um, it was called parallel line converse day. So yesterday we didn't know if our lines were parallel or not, and we used the given information to decide if we had enough information to conclude that they're parallel. So number one in the warm up, angle 13 is congruent to angle 15. So we start every problem like this by naming the vocab word, vocab word. Corresponding angles. And we know that if corresponding angles are congruent, then our lines are parallel. Well, angle 13 is congruent to angle 15, so the corresponding angles are doing what the theorem says to do, therefore we have parallel lines. But it's not a yes or no question, it's tell which two lines must be parallel. So the answer is, which two lines? Should have gotten A is parallel to B. Very good. Number two. Angle seven is congruent to angle four. So I could almost write it the same way I was writing last one. If vertical angles are congruent, then, well, then nothing. Okay, so what I was saying is that if vertical angles are congruent, and then I just put dot, dot, dot. No, they do not imply that two lines are parallel. That's not a theorem. If vertical angles are congruent, well, wait a minute. Vertical angles are always congruent. It doesn't mean anything happened. So the answer to number two would be none. No lines are parallel if seven is congruent to four. It doesn't force anything. Number three. Angle three and angle two are supplementary. Angle three and angle two are supplementary. Well, those are, always in the vocab word, same side interior angles. And if same side interior angles are supplementary, then our lines are parallel. So now we just have to pick the lines, and it's the same as number one, right? Yep. A is parallel to B. 4 and 16. Angle 4 and angle 16 are same side exterior angles. They need to be supplementary as well if we want to have parallel lines. This time we changed it and with 4 and 16 the parallel lines are C and D. Is everyone able to, un to see which lines are parallel, or do you need me to give you some extra tips? Are we good with this? Homework answers. The homework was called Proving Lines Parallel. No, you didn't have to write a proof, but you did have to decide which lines are parallel. 17 on your homework said, is P parallel, or is PT parallel to SR? If so, state the theorem that supports your conclusion. So, like I said, sometimes it helps to extend the lines that you're trying to focus on. PT and SR. There we go. Okay. So we've got parallel lines and we have a transversal. I just picked one to be the transversal. I picked the one that used the 40 degree angle, so I picked that one on purpose. Now, you did need to know some extra information. You needed to know what the angles of a triangle add up to. What do the angles of a triangle add up to? 180 degrees, good. So if you do 60 plus 80, and you subtract from 180, oops, you're gonna get 40. So that missing angle in that triangle is 40. I spy some alternate interior angles. Do you see that? Alternate interior, 40, 40. Alternate interior angles. So our statement is, well, first of all, the answer is yes. And our statement is, if alternate interior angles are congruent, then PT is parallel to SR. The theorem says that alternate interior angles need to be congruent for our lines to be parallel. Okay, likewise, you would do the same thing on part B. You would find the missing angle of the triangle. You would do 37 plus 59. You would subtract it from 180. 
and you would again, you would get 84. So we have another pair of alternate interior angles. So I'm not going to write out the sentence again. It's the same sentence, and the answer is yes. You're using vertical angles, but remember those can't prove parallelism. Is that a word? Parallelism. Uh, number one, use the information to state which lines are parallel. So if we look at angle one and angle nine, focus on only the lines that are needed to create those angles. Only focus on the lines needed to create those angles. Angle 1 and angle 9 are corresponding angles. You studied your vocab last night. You know your vocab upside down and inside out. Corresponding angles are supposed to be congruent. And look at that. They're congruent. So A is parallel to C. State the statement that justifies our answers. If corresponding angles are congruent, then A is parallel to C. So that's the statement that you would write for number one. Okay? Number seven. Use the given information to determine if AC is parallel to DF. So here's the ones we're looking at. AC, DF. All right. Angle BAD is 42. So this whole angle, I'm going to put an arc because it's the whole angle, is 42. BAC is 25. I'm just going to put a little arrow because I'm running out of room. That one's 25. And FDG is 17. Oh, sorry. Right here. Okay, much better. That's where the 17 goes. So what we want to look at here is we want to look at, I'll shade it. We want to look at this angle and we want to look at this angle. Those are corresponding angles. If they happen to be congruent, boom, the lines are parallel. If they're not congruent, then all bets are off. The lines are not parallel. So we need to find that missing angle. We already know that this one right here is 17. So we need to find the other one. So we do 42 minus 25. 17, ding, ding, ding. So since this one is 17 as well, we would say yes. And then we would do if corresponding angles are congruent, then AC is parallel to DF. That's the theorem we're using. Number 16, decide if it's a parallelogram, a trapezoid, or neither. So you need to look at two sides at a time. You can look at the top and the bottom, or you can look at the left and the right. Let's look at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to really look at the top and the bottom. Pick any transversal you want. Take your angles, and we know same side interior angles are supposed to be supplementary. So we want those two to be supplementary. So we go to our calculator, and we're like, hmm, 87 plus 93. Oh, it adds up to 180. So we have proved that the top is parallel to the bottom. Now let's work on the left and the right. Now let's work on the left and the right. So is the green parallel to the green? Well, you need to look at these two angles. Those are same side interior angles. And you add those two up, and I can already tell 87 plus 91 is not going to equal 180. So the green are not parallel, whereas the blue are parallel. So what would our answer be? One pair of sides parallel. So this shape is a trapezoid. Said that weird. Trapezoid. Okay. All right. So in number one, we know that we have some parallel lines. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those lines parallel. These lines are parallel. Arrow, arrow. And three and four are parallel. Double arrow, double arrow. So Go ahead and just find a number somewhere on your diagram and start with that number. Like I could come over here and I could start with 52 if I wanted to. In a cluster of four, when you know one number, you know all four numbers. So you can use your vertical angles and you can use linear pair. And really the more numbers, the more angles you find, the better off you're going to be. And it does help to write it on the picture, not just in the blanks below. So we have A so far. We have A is 128. Now I see some alternate interior angles, so I'm going to start to use that. 128, go to the alternate side here, 
128. 52, alternate interior angles, 52. Now I have vertical angles, look at that. C is 52 right here. And remember what we talked about in class, if we have an isosceles triangle, the angles across from those tick marks are congruent. So we're across from those tick marks, the so 52, 52. We kind of already did that in class. So we're going to add up 52 plus 52, and we're going to subtract from 180, and we get that D is 76. Ooh, now I see some corresponding angles. We're going to try to get to the other side of the picture. So G, or sorry, D is 76, and it's corresponding with G, corresponding angles. So we're using our vocab. Now, you see those angle arcs. That means that those are congruent. So when I'm looking right here, I know I can take 180, I can subtract 76, and I can divide by 2 because those angles are congruent. We're going to end up with what we ended up in that triangle with, 52, 52. I'm going to kind of jump around if that's okay with you guys. Um, 76 here is corresponding angles with right here. Those are corresponding, so I'm going to use that. Now we need to find the supplement of 76. And this one is 104. Now we can use alternate interior, 104, 104. Alternate interior angles. Cool. Um, now we can do, if we're trying to, now the problem is be careful because this line is not parallel to anything. So be careful, you can't use like corresponding angles and put the 104 there, no. Because you have to only use your theorems with parallel lines. Don't use it on lines that are not parallel. So be careful with that purple one. Um, let's work with the 70 because we've kind of done everything we can with that 52. So um, I see an arc with a double tick mark and I see another arc with a double tick mark. So that tells me that that angle is 70, and it was just given to us. I didn't use any theorems. That was just given. Now we can do alternate interior angles, 70, 70, with purple as our transversal. And then we can do linear pair, 110. Then we can do 70 here, vertical angles. And then to find N, you need to use a triangle. A triangle has 180 degrees. So 180 minus 70 minus 52, and N is 58. Everyone's following if you're watching, I hope. It's all making sense, I hope. Um, the last one we need to find is P. And what students kind of forget to do sometimes is to look at bigger triangles. You don't have to solve it this way, but look at a bigger triangle for a minute. If you look at that triangle, you already know two of the angles, and you only need to find the third angle. So you could just add up 70 plus 70 and subtract from 180 to get 40 degrees right here. 40, 4, 0. That's hard to see. P is 40. And that's parallel line diagram number 1.